The economic outlook for St. Kitts and Nevis is positive, with the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, projecting a 4.5% growth for 2023. Well, the IMF warns that downside risks could affect tourism source markets and commodity price volatility. An IMF mission visited St. Kitts and Nevis during January 16 to 27, 2023, for the 2023 Article 4 consultation discussions on economic developments and macroeconomic policies. In a statement on its website, the IMF said the mission team benefited from candid and constructive discussions with public and private sector counterparts and other stakeholders. In its summary, the mission said St. Kitts and Nevis is recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic and cost of living crisis. The large fiscal buffers accumulated over a decade of prudent fiscal policy have supported the authority's forceful policy response to protect the livelihood of the population. The outlook is positive but subject to downside risks in the short term primarily stemming from global headwinds impacting key tourism source markets and commodity price volatility, the statement said. Meanwhile, the IMF expressed concerns over the sustainability of the Citizenship by Investment programs CBI resources, and said a pressing need for investment in climate change adaptation will require prioritizing policies. To achieve this, the IMF recommends phasing out crisis-related measures, rationalizing control spending, and streamlining social transfers and a holistic overall of the tax framework. In the near term, the IMF is recommending phasing out crisis-related measures such as phasing out of the electricity price subsidies, streamlining of income support measures, and the restoration of the corporate income tax rate. In the medium term, the fund said a holistic overall of the taxation framework will be of essence to reduce dependency on the CBI and to maintain fiscal space. One suggestion is reform of the property tax to support the housing market and home ownership while increasing progressively and a reintroduction of progressive personal income tax, which it said would help strengthen fiscal sustainability, improve fairness and equity, and achieve inclusive growth. More on the Article 4 statement can be found on the IMF website at www.imf.org. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. Almost on the stroke of midnight, marking the start of 1st February 2023, St. Kitts and Nevis's first female Governor General was sworn in at Government House in the presence of the country's Prime Minister and other Federal Ministers of Government. Her Excellency Marcella Leiber, JP, took the oaths of allegiance and of the office, both administered by resident High Court Judge Tamara Gill. Her Excellency Marcella Leibert is the fifth Governor General in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis since the country attained its political independence from Britain in 1983. Sir Tapley Seaton, JP, the immediate past Governor General, was unable to attend the ceremony. However, he extended his best wishes to Her Excellency Marcella Leibert. Leibert served the country in various capacities. She was a teacher for several years before pursuing a legal profession. She also served in the National Assembly as Speaker and later as an elected Member of Parliament on the government benches. She was recognized for her contribution to the development of gender equality and was also elected the first female chairperson of the Sinkis Nevis Labour Party. She has been serving as the Governor General's Deputy since 15 September 2022. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. Living in the Caribbean is like paradise until you try to sell or buy an item online. If only there was an online marketplace that caters to your region. Well, no, there is. On Buy, Sell, SKN, you can easily buy or sell used and new items, browse for services, and it's completely free. Visit BuySellSKN.com, create your free account, sell your item or service, and get paid. Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com 
for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports, all from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Nestled between evergreen mountains and the Caribbean Sea on the island of St. Kitts is the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center. With breathtaking views, a rugged, beautiful shoreline, and immaculate manicured gardens make this the perfect location for your holiday, event, or wedding. With a large convention center, apartments with balconies providing stunning views, and a secluded cottage for larger family groups or honeymooning couples looking for some privacy. We have something for everyone. Book your stay at www.millhouseskn.com or visit our Facebook page, the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, an oasis of tranquility. Cleon Stapleton Simmons, second time elected member representing the Nevis Reformation Party, NRP, in the Nevis Island Assembly, was a guest on the narrative hosted by Rosalind Crosby as she spoke of the political impasse being experienced in the NRP. According to Mrs. Stapleton Simmons, there has been some misrepresentation of the issue on social media platforms and sought to explain the situation from her vantage point. Now, I just wish to say on record that the leader of the opposition is not really an issue. I think um, that was somewhat misconstrued by persons in Nevis, the general public and in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And so the leader of the party, even though it is not absolutely automatic for her to be the leader of the opposition, she does have uh, my support in order to be the leader of the opposition. What perhaps is in contention is really being able to choose a senator, someone that both myself and the leader of the party is definitely comfortable with um, being in parliament and someone that we can work with. And so that is really the crux of the issue. And it's, it's still a process. It's an ongoing process. It's something that we are trying to determine. And so we have looked at a number of persons. Uh, we actually have a specific criteria to see where those persons actually fit in and how they can contribute to the overarching aim and objective of the party. And so that process is still ongoing. And, you know, the, the impasse somewhat reflect perhaps a bit, you know, the, in, the some, sometimes the impatience of people. You know, people have certain expectations. And sometimes when you do not manage those expectations properly, you know, people become um, disgruntled, um, for lack of a better word. And I think that has been our experience, but definitely I believe that this matter can be resolved and it should be resolved very shortly. The NRP would want to have the matter settled before the start of the budgetary session of the Nevis Island Administration expected in just weeks. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. Based on the results of the last Nevis Island Assembly elections, Premier Mark Brantley should make this his last term as Premier and leader of the Concerned Citizens Movement, the CCM, according to political analyst Peter Wickham. However, Mr. Wickham does not believe Mr. Brantley is inclined to step down after his term in office. You know, the assessments of Mark Brantley's leadership have been, certainly for me, have been disappointing. I had expectations of him, uh, not only at the local level, but at the federal level. And he achieved some distinction by serving at both levels with, with some distinction. And, and I think that that is, is noteworthy. Um, against the background, there have been these disappointments in terms of the fact that ultimately he was one of the people who broke up the uh, team unity um, arrangement. Uh, it has not paid dividends for him at the local level. Uh, and now you're looking at a person who is essentially a wounded premier who will continue to soldier on. And I, and I believe he will, because I think that at the root of it, you're dealing with a personality that is not convinced that he is is not good for the politics of Nevis, and he will soldier on in that regard. Um, my, my feeling is that you know he had an opportunity, uh, he hasn't been able to make good on it, and, and I don't see him being the future of local politics within Nevis, uh, and I certainly don't believe that anyone is going to trust him at the federal level in a hurry either. So. Um, 
personally, I were if I were him, I would I would look to alternative opportunities, especially as you you do have um, the the benefit of being uh, one of few persons who sat in the chair of premier, uh, and one of the few persons who sat in the chair of premier that also held ministerial office uh, and achieved some distinction at, at the federal level. So. From, from those two perspectives, I would say that he has done reasonably well uh, and could consider an early retirement and, and perhaps go back to his lucrative private practice. Mr. Wickham was asked whether he thought there was anyone else in the party who could succeed Mr. Brantley. I don't see anyone else within the CCM now emerging as a potential leader, not, not once he's in the chair. Uh, and um, so it, it will be almost like the old conversation that we have at Vance Emery where, you know, there was a, a star... Uh, which was Mark Branley, uh, and it took a while for that person to be able to come to the force. So similarly, especially as the star hasn't yet been identified, I don't believe that person will come to the force. Though the CCM won the December 2022 Nevis Island Assembly elections, the results marked a swing against the party as they won by a smaller margin. With the opposition Nevis Reformation Party winning two seats, the CCM only has a one-seat majority in the Nevis Island Assembly. The NRP is contesting the results in two of the seats, alleging electoral irregularities. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Living in the Caribbean is like paradise until you try to sell or buy an item online. If only there was an online marketplace that caters to your region. Well, now there is. On Buy Sell SKN, you can easily buy or sell used and new items, browse for services, and it's completely free. Visit BuySellSKN.com, create your free account, sell your item or service, and get paid. Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports. All from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Auto Plus Car Wash, located on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Bring your car to Auto Plus Car Wash to remove water stains, wiper marks, get your doors, roof panel cleaned, seat floor mats, buffing, headlights, and engine wash. You get quality service at the best price at Auto Plus Car Wash. They really care for your car. Call 765-5140 or visit them on the College Street Gut, Bastyr St. Kitts. Auto Plus Car Wash, where the service is number one. Seventy-five percent of homicide victims last year were also the breadwinners of their homes. These statistics coming from the head of Phone Bahamas, Candy Gibson. It's very hard, especially with children going back to school. You know, uniform assistant, there's lunch, and then do bear in mind now. You know, sometimes in these cases, the only person, even though they might have had not legal means or gainful employment, they would have been the only one taking care of family. And some of them, their mothers are sick, so when, and they're the ones who buy the medication or taking their moms to the doctor. And so when they meet their smiles like this, it tends to bring on a kind of hardship, a little burden, you know. We know that no one expects their loved one to be murdered. And in light of that, Gibson outlines a number of challenges the ones left behind encounter 
following that tragic demise. Because you already have your mortgage or your light bill, your rent, you have your car note to pay. Your loved one gets killed and so forth. And then when they get killed, their children now becomes your responsibility. You already, like, you know what, the cost of living now was gone. So you already go into your financial challenges and now to take on your loved one's um, children. It, it really is hard. She also speaks to issues with obtaining funds from NIB, especially if the victim didn't have enough contributions. If your loved one gets killed and they don't have sufficient contribution in at NIB, their children don't qualify for nothing. And I think that's very sad and it's very bad because if you are working to establishment and your establishment taking out your salary every week or every month and tell you what a matter and time is mice, why does national insurance feel like they're obligated or compelled to keep that? And after going through such a traumatic experience like losing your loved one to murder, Gibson says that more families are experiencing challenges when it comes to receiving funds to offer their family member a proper burial. And even with persons trying to get insurance, like the insurance companies don't want to pay out if, and if your loved one was killed. Once your loved one is murdered and the police comes on, they say, well, he was known to the police or he's a prolific offender or he was on bail. The insurance company now has an issue with paying out the, the monies. And while some families face challenges for funeral arrangements, others find themselves at the Department of Social Services having to cope with less than favorable customer service. Take Maxine Woods, for example. She lost her son on June 21st, 2019, after being stabbed to death on Malcolm Road. And three months later, she lost her husband in a shooting incident on October 9th in Nassau Village. Social services, um, the one in Fox Hill, Fox Hill, it wasn't good. They don't know how to talk to people. They don't know how to treat poisons when you come there. My social worker, what I had, she talked to me, so I never went back. Now the family of murder victims, Miss Gibson, she's doing an excellent job with reaching out to the families and helping in whichever way she could. And so thank God for her, thank God for my family members, my mother. And that's how we was able to continue to make it through. And to that, Gibson says this. This whole country needs to overhaul when it comes to customer service because some persons feel like whatever is there to give the people is mostly their daddy or their mommy own. Their mommy must see leaves or their daddy leaves some inheritance for them because I don't understand it. When we have entities in place supposed to help the persons, whether it be by simple information, pick up the phone and calling the person, they're actually giving them handouts. We shouldn't have nobody giving nobody no attitude in this country. Leah Cooper, Eyewitness News. Back in 2022, Vice President Dr. Barry Jagdeo said that the government was pushing towards updating provisions in the 1986 Petroleum Exploration and Production Act. We are hoping to improve. The one-year experience would help us really to improve, to look at the areas where we have capacity in. The Act applies to the exploration, extraction, conservation, and management of petroleum reserves existing in Ghana's exclusive economic zone. Jagdeo said that the petroleum laws slated for amendment in 2022 was halted due to unforeseen circumstances. The bill now slated for passage at the National Assembly in March 2023 is subjected to debates by policymakers, he added. Against this backdrop, Natural Resources Shadow Minister David Pallison reason that Guyana's outdated petroleum laws must be renewed now. No updating of the um, petroleum laws. You know, I mean, they, they, they... Were efforts made by your party to uh, ensure that that come into fruition? We, I, 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 on behalf of the, co um, the, the opposition, brought five motions. All were defeated. They were all stated that um, it's in the work, and when the government is ready, they'll get to do it. So of course, they'll never be ready. The first commercial oil discovery was made in 2015 at the Sabro Block by ExxonMobil, which ramped up offshore activities. In underscoring the urgent need for the revised act, Pazin pointed to ExxonMobil's purported breach of several clauses in the 2016 production sharing agreement and ESO Exploration Production Ghana Limited, EEPGL, failure to provide full liability coverage in case of an oil spill. Jagio said that even as the renewed petroleum laws are on the way, EEPGL is required to have a grade A institution. You would see that there's a complaint about Exxon and insurance, but we require 
Exxon and the others to have a grade A institution. But if the, the local companies don't have grade A institutions, then you have a conflict there. Person added that the amendment of the petroleum laws will keep the oil company on its toes. Antonio Day reporting for the AGP Nightly News. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, Reverend Al Sharpton and members of George Floyd's family will be among those attending Tyree Nichols' funeral in Memphis later. The 29-year-old died after being beaten by several Memphis police officers during a traffic stop on January the 7th. Five policemen have been fired and charged with murder. Two others have been suspended. Our North America editor Sarah Smith reports. Large crowds are expected to brave freezing temperatures in Memphis to attend the funeral of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols. A eulogy will be delivered by the veteran civil rights campaigner, the Reverend Al Sharpton. What happened to Tyree is a disgrace to this country. There's no other way to describe uh, what has happened in this situation. The service will also feature demands for significant police reform to try to avoid similar tragedies happening in future. The first black US Vice President Kamala Harris will be attending, a sign of just how big an impact this incident has had across America. The killing of Tyree Nichols has shocked the nation, but people in Memphis say it's not surprising. They have frequently witnessed violent attacks, often against black people in their city. The five police officers seen brutally attacking Tyree Nichols in the videos released by the Memphis Police Department are also black. Campaigners say that shows how deeply racism is embedded in police culture, when even black policemen are more likely to assault black victims and think they can get away with it. Those officers have already been sacked and charged with second degree murder. Since the videos were made public, one other white officer who was involved in the initial traffic stop has been suspended as have two emergency medical staff who appeared to be standing around not offering assistance as Mr. Nichols was lying injured in the road. Tyree Nichols' parents say they will not feel justice has been done until everyone involved in his death has been charged and is facing a criminal trial. They want new laws that would compel the police to intervene if a suspect is being assaulted by fellow officers and to offer assistance to anyone who's been injured as a result. Sarah Smith, BBC News, Memphis. <laughs> A film crew is in action here in Dakar, Senegal's capital. More and more, this type of production is increasing across the West African nation as the film industry undergoes a notable evolution. The film director here is the French actor and rapper Kerry James. I wrote a feature film called Bon Yuzat, which means Suburbanite. It aired on Netflix four years ago, and now we are here in Senegal to shoot the second part of this film. Senegal is part of, and I think it's true for all of Africa, uh, those countries where you put your camera down and immediately something happens. The colors are extraordinary. The movie is scheduled for release on Netflix later this year. Between exported series and foreign producers interested in local know-how, Senegal is starting to reveal its potential. I think that Senegal has a great deal of cinematographic potential, whether it be at the level of actors, at the level of productions, at the level of equipment. I know that we have potential and that we can go a long way. Afterwards, what is unfortunate is that we stop at series when, at the moment, we really have to try to bet on films. The American streaming giant Netflix is making its mark in Francophone West Africa. But there are also major regional production companies. One of them is Marodi, which produced the hit series Mistress of a Married Man. Today there is much more local content. Before then we consumed what was proposed to us and the African, the Senegalese, used to look at the other content since that is what was available to them. 
Now that Senegalese like us at Marodi have understood that it is important to highlight quality content, in watching Marodi series, we must not differentiate between a series from another platform or another continent, and that is why we are always committed to meeting the challenge of quality. Between 2018 and 2022, around 100 episodes of 52 minutes long TV series were made in Francophone Africa, according to the OIF. Now, world 200 meter champion Sharika Jackson opened her 2023 season with a 53.11 seconds clocking to win the 400 meters at the Queen's Grace Jackson Invitational Meet at the National Stadium today. The fastest living woman over 200 meters won the event ahead of St. Vincent Odisha Nanton, who clocked 55.37, and Christina Checker, who crossed the line in 55.78. Jackson says the performance was a comfortable one for her. Definitely, training has been going well and I just wanted to come out here and run a good 400. Probably not the time I wanted, but I am healthy and ready to go again, so I'm just excited. The 28-year-old says she's not putting any extra pressure on herself this season, despite her elevated status in world sprinting, having won one gold and two silver at the World Championships in Oregon last year. Definitely for me is no pressure. Um, I believe coach and I did a really pretty good job last year and for us to stay focused, not to focus on what others expect but his expectation and my expectation. So I don't think there is no pressure. Um, once I'm healthy I definitely want to go super fast and will go super faster so no pressure. Welcome to the SKN Newsline Weather Report. I am Janil Boone. Here is a look at the forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis. detailed weather report visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com